Hello, beautiful people. This is Dr. Elisa Metus with Channeling Eric and with Atlantis Scalar. Story time. We're going to continue to read the chapter Manifesting Things. Now, you might be thinking, but if he's a spirit and in heaven, why did he need to manifest all this uh, shit th that he's not going to use, like a house, booze, TV, and stuff? The only answer I have for that is that is this. It made me happy to have created a living space like the one I did uh, right down to the little inconsequential stuff that, yeah, I never really use as a spirit. It was still important to me at that early stage, even if it wasn't necessary. You know, it's hard to let go of humanness right away after you transition. At first, when I made uh, what I made was based on the memories of my life on Earth because those memories were still pretty strong. <clears throat> I remember my home, what I ate, what I wore, and, and um, what my house and my surroundings were like. So I created all of these for myself and more. What's weird is that the minute I didn't need what I created, it stopped existing. And so after I go over the... Uh, after I got over my transition period and started really letting go of my earthly possessions, all these things just disappeared. I can manifest it back into existence, and sometimes I do, but it's not something I really need anymore. Nowadays, I don't need all those things that I had as a human, so I've mostly let go of the concept of having a home and possessions. I see now that there's no benefit to having all that shit here. Sure, I can uh, conjure up a motorcycle if I want to kick ass on some imaginary track of my own um, creation. He loved that. But I don't need those wheels to feel connected to my earthly life uh, um, as er Eric. Now that I see it, heaven as my new reality rather than a material one, I don't live in my heaven house anymore. I still have a home base, though. It's the home I grew up in on earth, oh, where my sta family still lives it's so full of happy memories and love that I, so I find solace that I need when I'm there. Solace, I think you say. I hang out around my family's home most of the time because I like being with my mom, my dad, my sisters, and my brother. So back to manifestation. Thought is actually energy, like everything is. But it's easier for spirits to manipulate thought energy than it is for humans. But like I said before, this shit isn't easy by any means. It's not like I, I cross my arms and blink something into existence. Like that genie chick on the TV series, I Dream of Genie. Still, it took a lot of practice for me to get really good at it. Because it takes so much fucking energy to focus my thoughts on what I want to make. First, I practice in situations where the bonds are really strong. Like the one I have with my mom and with things and places I feel a strong connection to. For instance, I have a strong connection with the house I grew up in, and that bond helped me align my energy with it so that my first home could come into existence. I guess that's the like attracts like thing. Here's another way to think of it. Picture this. Picture the dust bunnies under your bed. First, they're just little specks of de dust, but over time, those dust particles pull together to make a dust, dust bunny. Well, I have an infinite amount of energy, lots of dust, uh, to use so I can make anything I want. And my thought energy sends out tendrils to find similar energy to connect to. Then I pull all that energy together to create another energetic shape. You can compare it to building a sand castle on the beach. You have all that sand available to you to mush together into a shape. Then when you're done with it, you can unmush it so that it goes back to the rest of the sand. Well, I can mush together my energy with other similar energies to make something. And when I'm done with it, I let it go to the collective energy mass. These days, if I create a beautiful park and a bunch of other spirits end up really liking it, using it, and thinking about it a lot, it stays put energetically. I've learned that the more spirits focus on something the more stable things in, uh, become in our world. Sometimes I work with other spirits to create something we all want. It's easier to manifest stuff along with other spirits because our energies can work together. For instance, once a bunch of us made a snow uh, slope so we could all go snowboarding together. At first, when I tried to make stuff, 
using the energy of something I didn't have a connection to was fucking hard. When I don't have a strong bond with uh, whatever I'm, I'm trying to work my energy magic with, I have to create an awareness of that connection. It's not as easy as thinking, I want a hundred pound bar of gold. I do. And the bar appears. I don't give a shit about gold. Again, I do. I don't have a connection to it. I do. So uh, I had to focus and practice to create that connection. But the, the more I practice, the better I become at building that bond. In the case of the gold bar, once I focused that connection into existence, I could meld my energy with its energy to make it. I call that entanglement. It's kind of a physics thing. It's called the spooky um, dance at a distance, the entanglement theory by, uh, that Einstein talked about. Because when electrons and other particles sort of get together and do a dance, they don't really dance like the waltz though, but you get my point, and then move apart, they still do that dance no matter what the distance is between them. Everything here can be explained with what people understand as physics on Earth. But there are different rules of physics in different dimensions and different universes. While I was creating all this earth-like crap to make myself feel at home, nobody stopped me. It was crazy. No one was saying, hey, son, stop that shit. You don't need it. There was no master guru hanging over my head saying, nah, man, you're wasting your time. I could create whatever I thought I needed or wanted, and I progressed both with my abilities to manifest and with my realizations about what was important to manifest in my own time. Next, we're going to have exciting chapter 13, more about what heaven's like. Is that cool?